Right, it's time to replace the batteries in my UPS power supply. Um, this is an APS 1500 watt unit, uh, which I've been running for quite a few years. It powers uh, my main PC, our internet fiber router connection, and also some security camera, uh, hard drive recorders, etc. So it's something that we keep going in the background, keep the power running. Now, um, I've opened the unit up and taken out the batteries, which is these two uh, batteries here. These are uh, SLA, sealed lead acid batteries. Now, essentially, they're not really any different to a lead acid car battery. Now, these batteries are rated at 18 amp hour, and I thought to myself, well, these are actually uh, $100 per battery, so that's $200 it's gonna cost me for new ones. Now, for about $120 a piece, I can get some 60 amp hour car batteries. So three times the capacity of this for 30 bucks more, that's 60 bucks for the two more, and I've got three times the capacity. Um, I don't actually need that capacity because we have a big solar system in this house and also battery storage. So the UPS is only really uh, to jump in and switch in uh, when there's a power failure for a few seconds, generally. But for the sake of a few extra bucks, I thought, why not put in the bigger batteries? So the question is, can you run car batteries onto these UPSs and, and run them effectively? Um, the quick answer is yes, you can, because these are sealed lead acid batteries, exactly the same as any car battery, and they run at the same float voltage of about 13.8 volts. So they should be just plug and play. So I'm gonna get hold of some today. I've got most of the little accessories. We don't need too much here to do this job. I'm gonna use eight gauge wire here. We need something fairly solid uh, because you could have up to 30 or 40 amps running through these. Going that, considering we're going from 24 volts to 240 volts in this case, because we're in little New Zealand with 240 volts mains power. So I'm going to go grab the batteries and we'll start putting this together and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I've ripped the uh, outer cover off the unit here just so I can drill a hole uh, into the case because we've got to feed our external cable, battery cable in here somewhere. So it doesn't really matter too much where. I'm going to tap it a hole in the side here just so it comes through the top of the inner case here. So I'm going to go drill that hole now, and we need to put a big rubber grommet in there because we don't want these cables to be um, short-circuiting against the uh, steel case. So I'm going to go and do that now, and we'll carry on. Right, we've uh, drilled our hole through here and put a grommet, a nice solid rubber grommet through here, so we've got a nice pathway for our external cables. Um, I think on the inside here, we've actually got an Anison connection here inside the UPS, so I'll pick up one of those in a moment and we'll attach a new Anderson connection on that and so we can connect straight on to the input inside. So we'll go ahead and um, on the other end of our cables here we'll start putting some battery terminal connections. Okay I've gone ahead and um, made all of our DC cable connections here. Uh, you'll see I've put uh, an Anderson connection in here so that we can connect the positive and negative straight into the existing Anderson connection here which replaces the existing one going on to the smaller batteries. Uh, now I have put in series here a DC isolation switch as well, just in your positive line there, uh, just so that you can completely dis disconnect the uh, battery circuit uh, at any stage when you're inserting and replacing the batteries. Now um, I have uh, done crimp lugs onto then lugs connected to your battery terminal connectors. I do like to put heat shrink, uh, preferably a glue type heat shrink on top of those as well, just to make those real secure connections. Now, because we're using two batteries in series here, uh, two 12s to get a 24 volt battery effectively, we need to do a link between the positive and negative of the two batteries. So we've, we've created a jumper cable here. Uh, again, we're using eight gauge cable here because uh, remember potentially you've got up to 50 or 60 amps that could flow through this if this gets up to its 1500 watts power output at any time. Now, absolutely critical here on your low voltage DC connected to car batteries, you can have massive current flows coming through those if you have an accidental short circuit or a fault. So the key here is to put a fuse link in the link between the two batteries. 
Um, in this case, so I've got a, a cartridge here which has got a 60 amp fuse in here. So just absolutely critical, you've got to have a, a link fuse in there in case you get a dangerous fault. Um, big fire risk. Um, and of course, you've got to remember that your fuse rating has to be lower than what your cable rating is. So uh, no good having a 60 amp fuse if you've got 30 amp wire. Okay, so you've got, you've got to have to see your fuse blows first. So we'll grab the batteries up and go from there. Right, here's our two batteries, uh, two basically standard lead acid car batteries. I just want to talk quickly on uh, these batteries and why we another reason we chose them uh, over using these the standard size sealed lead acid batteries here. Um, now, these are not uh, deep cycle batteries as you'd find in, a, say, a boat or a caravan. They're, they're standard car batteries. Now, what deep cycle means is that they are designed to be have a full charge and then to have hours and hours of drain out of them so the energy is drained down to maybe 20% of the charge. And then they can be charged up again in the same sort of cycle over and over. A normal car battery, a normal sealed lead acid battery is not designed to do that. So with these smaller ones particularly, they can be drained down very quickly to a low level. So with these larger batteries, as well as them, they didn't cost much more than these batteries. We're actually going to get a lot more lifespan out of these as well, because it's, mo it's most likely that as opposed to this one being drained down substantially on the occasion that a, uh, a UPS kicks in, this, these ones may only be drained down a little bit from their top up. So by having a lesser cycle from full capacity to the fully drained point until the UPS turns off, it, it actually extends the lifespan of the batteries. Um, if you fully, if, with a normal car battery, if you fully drain it and recharge, fully drain it and recharge it about 30, 40 times, you'll actually destroy the battery. It'll be, it'll be stuffed. Um, but we're not likely to do that with this UPS. So just another thing, which is an additional advantage of going to these bigger sizes. These were probably like at five or six years sitting in the UPS. I reckon I'll get eight or nine years out of these sitting here. So dollar for dollar, these will actually work out cheaper than those. Let's give it a try. Okay, here's the first test run. Um, we have hooked up all of our connections to the battery. Obviously a link between the battery with our fuse and through to our cables into the unit. Um, powered it up, turned on your battery. And when I powered it up initially, it was showing battery at 6%. This was probably about 10 minutes ago. And it's now showing 12%. So it is humming away and charging these batteries up pretty reasonably well, actually, even quicker than I expected. Um, so you just bear in mind that there's about four times the capacity in this battery setup than the factory one. So the charger will certainly charge you without any problem, but it will take around about four times as long to fully cap the charge up on these batteries as opposed to your standard ones. Um, now just a couple of safety points I should have mentioned earlier. If you're dealing with UPSs, anything like this, which has your mains power, make sure you know what you're doing when you're taking any covers off and you don't want to be anywhere near the 240 volt or 120 volt power side of the uh, unit here. Um, that's dangerous. Yeah, that can kill you. Um, but also, uh, and I just demonstrated this to myself a few minutes ago, um, the high current flow on these car batteries it can be extremely dangerous as well. Um, you've got to be extremely careful not to do any short circuit between any of your batteries here. Now I know this very well because I just did it accidentally about 10 minutes ago. Um, I've replaced dozens of car batteries. Um, I'm an electrical engineer by, by training, but somehow in my carelessness, which I'm usually extremely cautious, while doing up the bulk on one of these connections, I managed to drop the driver here and momentarily touch the terminal on the other side of the battery. And yes, it was a massive spark. And yes, it's pretty much like you're running an arc welder. So it gave me a hell of a fright, extremely dangerous, one solid chunk of metal here short circuiting. Not, not, good, not good for you or the battery. So just be extremely careful with that. So we're going to leave this for a while now. I'm actually going to let it charge up 
sitting at 14%. So I'm going to leave this. We're going to go away for a while. And once it's looking like the batteries are, are more sort of topped up, we'll just see how it's running. Just a few uh, useful points uh, while waiting for this whole unit to sit here and charge up for a while. And now I did, as you saw, I have got a DC isolation switch uh, on our cable connection here between the UPS and the car batteries. I highly recommend you do that so you can quickly disconnect it at any point if you need to. But of course, most decent UPSs, probably all of them, should have a isolation plug of some sort on the back of the unit, which is used, of course, when they're shipped new and they're in transit. Um, this plug is removed, which actually just disconnects the battery link to the UPS, so it's not actually powering the unit while it's in transit. So, of course, pulling this out will do the same thing as your isolation switch, but really handy to have that up front where you can access it easily. Um, the other thing again which we want to bear in mind is that this is a 1500 watt uh, inverter unit so theoretically can be pumping out 1500 watts which is quite a bit. Now if this is this is a 240 volt unit so if, if this is pumping out that sort of um, power wattage when it's running it's actually going to be pumping out 240 volts here at around about 6 to 7 amps of current flow. So just bear in mind that because we're stepping up from 24 volts DC to 240 volts, it's a 10 to 1. So your 6 or 7 amps here at your lower voltage 10 times lower means your current rating, your current flow, sorry, on your DC side is going to be 10 times higher. So you, if that's pumping 6 or 7 amps out here at your main supply, it's 60 to 70 amps is going to have to be flowing in these 24 volt uh, low voltage circuit. So just bear that in mind, you are talking about some potentially quite high current flows here if you start running UPSs with quite a bit of power. Having said that, I personally wouldn't be running this, this amount of power out of this UPS anyway. Uh, with all my full loads on this, it's probably about 300 odd watts, but we'll check that later on when we do a, a live test. So just a couple of points to be aware of there with your, your cable sizing and your safety things there. So two 12 volt batteries here, actually their float voltage would be normally about 13.8 volts. It's the same as the factory batteries in a UPS and same as a car, any other car battery. So 13.8 by two is of course 27.6. And as you'll see here on our multimeter, we're reading 27.62 volts, which is, so that's exactly dead on and exactly what I'd expect to see. All right. So we've taken the UPS uh, off our assembly area and put it into its final resting place here with the two batteries connected. We've actually had it running for a while now. Uh, but what we want to do now is just do a bit of a test and see how well does this actually run in terms of, well, run time, uh, having these two big car batteries attached. Um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to, it's, it's fully up and battery's 100% charged. We're going to flip the power off. And then we're going to come back in a while and see how long it takes to drain to a certain level. So let's go with the power off now. Just checking that progress here. Um, it's only been running a few minutes now actually. But I just thought I'd take a look at the uh, display settings here. It's currently saying 70, around 79% battery. 72, it's bouncing up and down. That's just an estimate. Um, and it's suggesting a runtime of 47 minutes, but I expect it's going to be a lot longer than that. If we just flip across one screen here, just to show what load we're actually running on. Um, not a particularly high load, we're, we're actually only running here at uh, 210 watts coming out of this at the moment. Uh, which is actually powering, it's powering a desktop, several monitors, a uh, router, uh, and a modem, etc. So, um, but that's about right, 210 watts. So we'll keep monitoring it and we're timing it now to see. I think what we'll do is we'll let it go down to maybe a 60% or a 50% battery level and just see how long that takes. So while we're waiting for our test here with the uh, UPS still running and draining the batteries, I thought let's uh, put a clamp meter onto the DC 24 volt line feeding the uh, UPS from the batteries just to see how much 
current flow there is. So yeah, it's reading 8.6 odd, 8.5 amps, give or take, 8.5 amps at the 24 volts going into the UPS, which makes sense given that we're using about 200 watts, uh, sorry, generating 200 watts out of the UPS. Uh, and again, it's still ticking along here with our um, readings. If we go back to here, so it's still saying 68%. So you can see it's um, the batteries are, are ticking along quite well and keeping it running for a fair amount of time here. Okay, so we're just coming up to the 30 minute mark. Uh, and the battery's now hitting just that 60% mark, approximately. Um, it's all just guideline stuff anyway with that percentage. It's based on, it's trying to make an estimate based on the voltage sitting on the battery, etc. So, you know, looking at that 30 minutes, so, you know, I, I would say you could probably easily get another 30 minutes out of this. So, um, yeah, an hour plus without excessively draining the battery to a, to a, a level that's going to damage the batteries so so that gives us a good idea I guess as to um, how it performs with these larger batteries um, certainly would have gone out a lot quicker with those smaller factory sized batteries in it. Mm -hmm.